if you want to live in a sustainable uh, society, we need to think about how to recycle polyurethanes. Even though we build a building and we use polyurethanes for insulation, uh, after a few years or a few tens of years, like 50 years later, you want to build another building, but you have to get rid of the materials that you used for the previous one. So you need to recycle polyurethanes. So polyurethanes are based on two materials, basically, isocyanates uh, and polyols. Polyols contain OH groups like uh, the ethanol in your wine, but they have many OH groups. Uh, therefore, there are many positions where the isocyanates or polyisocyanates, the other uh, reactants, could connect with these materials. And the isocyanate uh, group with the hydroxyl group creating a urethane bond. And if you have many isocyanates in one sense and many OH in the other, you can create many urethanes. We need polyols, which uh, are cheap and widespread all around us. You can find maybe in your kitchen. And it was an easy choice to think about carbohydrates and particularly sugars. So we are focusing on different sugars and we are trying to replace the polyols with uh, these uh, materials, uh, namely uh, sucrose, fructose, glucose, maltose and mannitol. We used uh, computational chemical models to uh, study the reaction between the isocyanate model, what we, we created, and uh, between these sugars. And uh, based on the calculations, we were able to, to compare the reactivity of the different sugars, and we finally, as I mentioned, <laughs> selected fructose as the best candidate. This is the first attempt to use only fructose in the polyol side to synthesize polyurethane or bio-based polyurethane. There, are, there were attempts before where they like replaced uh, some of the petrobased polyol with uh, up to like 30 percentage of fructose, but I think, or at least as far as I know, there were no attempts to replace everything, everything in the polyol side.